In my opinion, the Nigerian conundrum is a sum of our intractable problems. It began for operational purposes from the period of our post-colonial period up to the period of independence. The immediate post-independence period, the period of the military and the many attempts at democracy, are notable times we can also put in context. The conundrum is reflected in our political challenges, witnessed in the fears and experiences around coups and counter-coups, and in the tensions around elections. It really says in the downsides of military rule, through the abhorrence of debate, and then due process and methods of public administration. The tendency for dictatorship offends the spirit of the civil society and diminishes the decision-making integrity of the populace. But apart from our military dictatorship experience, there's also the crisis of democracy, along with the practitioners in the democratic process. Regrettably, we have been witnesses to a greater number of self-interested politicians, mostly concerned about pecuniary interests and themselves alone. Contrary to their campaign promises, our politicians are placing their private interests above common and national interests. And this has led to lip service and a slow pace of national development. Many politicians now see the Treasury as a tool for enrichment. There's hardly any distinction between, as have been shown in many cases in the past, between their private purse and of the public. Once they have access to public fund, its misuse and its abuse begin in earnest. And while there may be some accountability at the federal level, there's little or none at the state and local government levels. The results have been failed promises, poverty, lack of economic development, deprivation, and insecurity. The people are then alienated from government at all levels. Think about it. It's like we're back to colonial period, to colonialism, where the politicians are the colonial masters and the people the subjects. While our politicians lead us through this path, we watch as Khans, as many other nations are progressing. We've heard of stories of Singapore, Malaysia, the United Arab Emirates, China, and increasingly Rwanda. Most of them countries with whom we were once development peers. Today, many of those countries are far ahead of us in development and are yet increasing their strides. On the other hand, we have remained stagnant on many fronts, or at best, are developing at a slower rate. One of the greatest challenges facing our country today is a threat to national unity as centrifugal tensions, resource control, and self-determination, ethnicity-based identity politics and religious cleavages have enveloped national consciousness. But the issue of ethnicity and the exploitation of its residual gain has been with us from the beginning. For those who know Nigeria's founding fathers, great as they were in terms of what they hoped for the young country in 1960, played their politics on ethnic lines for the most part. For example, 
the Northern People's Congress, MPC, was for the advancement of the North. The Action Group, the AG, was founded and promoted for the advancement of the political agenda of the Western region. While the National Council of Nigeria and Cameroons was for the Southeast agenda. Today, several years after, Nigeria is still dealing with the offshoot of such rather self-centered calculations. This is why we have today the Arawa Consultative Forum, the Odua People's Congress, and the Ohaneze Indigo, all waxing strong in this 21st century. And all these organizations, each of them, speak for their people. None, repeat, none speaks for Nigeria. They all talk about their own ethnic nationalities. So who then speaks for Nigeria? Who speaks for a great country? According to Adeniji Adeyinka Samsen, in his publication titled The Impact of Ethnicity on Nigeria's Political Development, we can see ethnicity as apparently a negative value, given that it has contributed nothing but disunity in diversity, as ethnic groups are regarded closer and ethnic interests are seen as utmost priority over national interests. However, ethnicity, when viewed in a different perspective, could be regarded as a positive value because it, it exemplifies unity in diversity. The Nigerian existence points to the fact that despite numerous and various ethnic groups, ethnic militia movements, and recurring ethnic violence for over 50 years, the country still operates as one, and there's still political continuity, albeit with some problems. Across the length and breadth of Nigeria, ethnic factor and consideration in politics, economic, social, and academic matters cannot be avoided. Politics in Nigeria is ethnic-oriented. Political parties have ethnic consciousness, and they pursue ethnic interests differently from the national interests. The ethnic factor, or ethnicity, is more often than not the ground on which presidents are elected, governors voted, ministers appointed, contracts awarded, and national policies decided. The socio-political belief is that one can only get to power at the center through ethnic connections or by fanning the embers of ethnicity. And this has led to the formation of ethnic militia, which refers to the extreme form of ethnic agitation for self-determination. But realizing the danger associated with the ethnic card, national integration has been a top priority of governments in Nigeria. So the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC scheme, the Unity Schools, the Federal Character Principle and State Creation are ready examples of state policies intended to achieve the goal of unifying Nigerians. But it is clear that the outcome of integration policies and programs in Nigeria have fallen far below expectation as primordial ethnic loyalties are still deep-seated. Ethnic particularism is seen as the major cause of this failure. And consequently, suggestions and policy options are targeted to deal with this issue. Make no bones about it. Unity occurs when all of the elements of a peace combine to make a balanced, harmonious, complete whole. As the political landscape becomes very busy towards the 2019 elections, we are witnesses to the role that ethnicity is playing in throwing up the gladiators. I dare say that the rivalry between the ethnic groups has made it impossible for leaders of high moral standing who live above boards, like the IRA, who 
exude impeccable and predictable character and who are ready to offer themselves for the development of the nation, they are discouraged. Ethnic affiliation has not allowed such leaders to emerge. And at each election, the emphasis has also always been on where the candidates came from rather than on the right candidates for election.